Not a man that just showed up for this fight. He's been fighting fights all his life. He's walked the line. He's talked the talk his entire life, not just in the last 30 or 40 years. He stood up for economic justice because he knows that the struggle and the loss of American workers and their families, what they endure. He realizes, as we all must, that fights are bigger than politics because he knows that whether or not you're a Republican or you're a Democrat, this is about whether or not hard-working men and women should be able to live a better life. He's not here for a political rally. He or himself, he's here to rally to support you. Every stop and shop worker and their families. The simple truth is that when any of us see something wrong, it's up to us, all of us, to speak out and say what's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor, it is my privilege <laughs> to introduce the former Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. How are you? God love you. <clears throat> I want to start off by thanking Mark. He called me and asked her that I'd come up and speak. Look, I'm getting so sick and tired of the way everybody's being treated, all American workers, that I've had it up to here like a lot of you have. And look, look, I was going to go, I'm going to make this short because it's raining here and I'm going to lose you all. But look, looking out at this crowd, it looks like my old neighborhood in Scranton and in Claymont. No, I really mean it. I mean it. I really mean it. People who bust their neck, people who go out and make a living, people who play by the rules, people who have done everything they're supposed to do, and people who are entitled to be treated with respect and decency and fairness. You know, my dad used to say, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your decency of your place in the community. It's about how you're treated. It's about decency. It's about honor. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay, and mean it. When he lost a job, it's, no, I mean it. I really mean it. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not joking about this. This is not a political thing. This is a God's truth. When my dad left Scranton because he didn't have work, every time someone would lose a job and claim on a Wilmington where he lived, he'd say that. It's about a lot more than a paycheck. And what's happening here is workers are not being treated across the board with dignity. They're not being treated like they matter. And let me get something straight with you all. Wall Street bankers and CEOs did not build America. You build America. We build America. Ordinary middle class people build America. <clears throat> and guys, that's not hyperbole. That's just a simple fact. That's a fact. The middle class built this place. And you know who built the middle class? Unions. Unions built the middle. Not a joke. And something's happening here, guys. The reason why you not only busted your neck and walked picket lines and went on strike over the years to get better results for you, you got better results for every worker in America. There's only one reason why there's a 40-hour week. There's only reason why there's overtime pay. There's only reason, one reason why these protections exist. And they exist for all workers, because of you. But for a while, a lot of other laborers, not union, forgot it. But now the way they're being treated by corporate America, they're beginning to remember it again. That's why they're going to support you and boycott in this place. That's why they're going to support you and, no, I really mean it. <laughs> Things are going to change, and it's about time they change. Look, guys, everybody who works like hell in this country, the, the way we're all raised is you work, you play by the rules, you get a shot, and you get a shot, you get an opportunity. You get an opportunity to be in the middle class. The middle class is not a number. The middle class is a value set. It's about being able to own your own home and not have to rent it. It's being able to send your kid to a decent park where then you know they're going to come home safely. Send them to school. You know, if you do well, they can go beyond high school. It's being able to take home your geriatric mom when, in fact, your dad passes away 
and hope your kids never have to take care of you. And how's that happen? It happens if you have decent health care. It happens if you have a fair wage. It happens if you have a retirement. Without those things, you cannot live a middle-class life. And let's get something straight about this outfit. And they're not unique here. They're not unique. It's happening all over corporate America. These guys made, this parent company made $4 billion in the last two years. They got almost $250 million in a tax cut with that scam that the president put through. through. And what do they do? <clears throat> now, look, think, think about this. What do they do? They bought back $3 billion of their own stock. You know why? Because that increases the amount of mo the, the value of the stock that's left. That means the CEO gets paid a hell of a lot more, the wealthy get paid a lot more, and the stock carriers get paid a lot more. You know, it used to be, it used to be that the only, the only stakeholder in corporations were not just shareholders. I got a cartoon in my office that I think you saw it, Marty. Every time the President Committee turned it around, it was on the mantelpiece. By now, I have it in my other office at Penn. And it says, it's a picture, it's from New Yorker. It's a picture of a great big rotund guy with a black turtleneck, black mask, and a black beret. And he's sitting at a table being interrogated. And there's a great big bag, a burlap bag in the table with a money sign on it. And he's looking at the interrogator and he's saying, how was I supposed to know he was a job creator? <laughs> when did that happen? The only people who are job creators are stockholders. When did that happen? My dad busted his rear end selling automobiles as a general manager. You mean to tell me he didn't create jobs all up and down the line? You don't create jobs all up and down the line? We used to have everybody who was in on the deal. It used to be a basic bargain that if you contributed to the benefit of the outfit you work with, you got to share in the benefit. But that doesn't happen anymore. Wages have gone up very little. Productivity has gone up exponentially. And where are you sitting? the same place you've been before. Look, guys, we've had enough of this. I really mean it. We've had enough of this. It's not just happening here. It's happening in union movements all across the country and a lot of ordinary people getting out there and supporting them. This bargain has been broken, and the fact of the matter is, you know, what they do, what, what they do with this is they go back and they, you know, how can they make that money, buy back all that stock and tell you they're going to cut your wages? They're going to cut overtime. They're going to cut your medical care benefits. They're going to cut. I mean, how, how in God's name does that match anything? Not a joke. I mean, look, <clears throat> I know you're used to hearing political speeches, and I'm a politician. I get it. But this is way beyond that, guys. This is way beyond that. This is wrong. This is morally wrong what's going on around this country. And I've had enough of it. I'm sick of it. And so are you. <laughs> and guys, look, look, uh, there, <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We're at a place where uh, um, the fact is uh, you're entitled to this country. We all were raised. I was raised with a dad who had a high school education and a lot of the, I'm the first guy in my family to go to college. No big, because my dad busted his neck to get me there. But here's the deal, guys. We were all raised to believe that if we worked like hell, we could do anything. That we had the ability to get anywhere. But we kind of was based on the idea we thought some people were going to pay just fair. And the thing that bothers me the most, and I'll end with this, is think about it. Think about how we don't treat hard-working American middle-class people with any dignity. My dad used to have an expression, and he means it. Every single person deserves to be treated with dignity. But think of what we do. You know, when the guy, uh, you know, I was just with the, uh, with, with, with the electoral workers. You know, if, if in fact, uh, you know, they're climbing up a pole in the middle of a storm, who goes by and says thank you to them? Who was the last time you told somebody who, who unstopped the drain outside your house to keep your basement flooding, thanks? I appreciate what you do. It's all of us, guys, too. No, it really is. It's all of us. We've got to start recognizing what people do because it matters to everybody. It matters whether or not they feel respected. And I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of the way we're not being treated. So, guys, I promise you, I promise you, there's a lot of folks that are going to support you. 
a lot of folks around the country supporting you, but you got to also support all the rest of these folks who are going to do the same thing. We got to stand together, and if we do, we will take back this country. I mean it. Don't give up. Keep it going. And one job should be enough. Thank you. By the way, God bless.